Welcome to CVPR 602 Physiologic Assessment. We are on lecture six. Uh, last, uh, last week we talked about oxygen content, oxygen delivery, and oxygen consumption. Uh, this week we're going to introduce you to arterial blood gas values. If you look in this uh, learning module, you'll see that there's other supplemental material for you to look at after you watch this screencast. Uh, there's a nice video from Khan Academy on buffer systems, another uh, brief uh, ABG interpretation to help you cement uh, your understanding on what, what to look for and how to interpret blood gases, and then a section with uh, you can practice your interpretation here. So uh, after this screencast, I would invite you to review these and to take the quiz before class. So we're going to talk about blood gases. Uh, that's a term that we use to describe uh, measuring the values of oxygen, CO2, pH in the blood. Um, and these blood gases are very valuable in critical care medicine, and it's something that you as a perfusionist will do continuously throughout a bypass case. You'll be drawing a sample from that manifold arterial often arterial and venous blood gases. And this is really an important aspect in understanding how well the perfusion we are providing is doing. So it's, uh, it's part of our adequacy of perfusion uh, tools. Arterial blood gases are invaluable in assessing ventilation, acid base balance, and oxygenation. Uh, we get a lot of information from these blood gases. Uh, and they help direct us as perfusionists uh, to do certain actions behind the pump that can maintain uh, our values within normal limits. Today I'm going to talk mostly about the blood gases on a, on a generic sense. Next week we're going to uh, put, put it in context to the perfusionists, how the perfusionist actions would follow our interpretation of these blood gases. But today, and for this week, I want you just to learn about arterial blood gases and interpretation of those blood gases. So in a patient that's not on bypass, a blood gas is drawn from an artery. Uh, in critical care medicine, as you know, we use hemodynamic monitoring. An arterial line that's measuring arterial line pressure provides us a great access for an arterial blood gas, or an ABG. It is an invasive procedure. Um, whenever we are working in an artery, a caution must be taken uh, with patients on anticoagulants. Uh, but this, these blood gases, again, will help differentiate oxygen deficiencies from primary ventilatory and primary metabolic acid-base abnormal abnormalities. So remember, an ABG is more than just the dissolved gases in the plasma of the blood. It also helps us understand the acid-base balance of blood. Acid-base balance of blood, as we see, as we work through, can be from respiratory or metabolic conditions. And we can tease that out of a blood gas. So when you receive results from an arterial blood gas, you're going to get pH, PCO2, PO2, the bicarbonate, uh, a BE, or the base excess, and the oxygen saturation of the blood. All this data will be presented in the ABG, and oftentimes electrolyte values will be there as well. But for the purpose of this lecture, we're going to talk about these elements here. Um, and this is what a normal ABG is, quote normal. Uh, in the population, you see that the pH is tightly regulated normally between 7.35 and 7.45. The PO2 between 90 and 100. The PCO2, 35 to 45. The bicarb, 24 plus or minus 2. Base excess, again, minus 2 to plus 2 in that range. And the SAO2 is normally greater than 95% for all of us in this room, breathing room air. So pH, of, as we know, is the negative logarithm of the number of hydrogen ions in solution. And uh, pH scales are uh, expressed as a number between 1, very acidic, and 14, very basic. 
PaO2 is a measure of partial pressure of oxygen dissolved in plasma. It is measured in millimeters of mercury. PCO2, again, a byproduct of metabolism. Like oxygen, it's dissolved directly in the plasma. And the PaCO2 is a measurement of the partial pressure of carbon dioxide dissolved in, in plasma. It also is measured in millimeters of mercury. Bicarbonate, so the bicarb and the base excess, these are paired together. It's part of our bicarbonate buffer system. And the SaO2 is the oxygen saturation, and that's the amount, the, the degree to which oxygen is bound to the hemoglobin. So this is a normal ABG. Let's talk more about the acid-base relationship. And, uh, you know, again, our cells operate ideally uh, and optimally in a very narrow range of pH, 7.35 to 7.45. And so the body has to guard that pH very closely. And so we have uh, a couple of ways that we can uh, adjust for changes in acid base. Um, so again, significant deviations from that, that narrow range of pH is poorly tolerated and are life-threatening. Uh, and you can, you can you can keep the pH within this range uh, through two primary mechanisms. There's a respiratory and a renal mechanism that helps maintain acid-base balances. And so there are two buffers that work in pairs, the carbonic acid and base bicarbonate. And these, these buffers are linked to the respiratory and renal compensatory systems. Uh, so we have ways of compensating. Um, so compensation can be done through the lungs, it can be done through the kidneys. The respiratory component of this, so compensation through the, the respiratory component or the lungs, or the oxygen when we're on bypass, um, is important. And the carbonic acid, H2CO3, so approximately 98% of the normal metabolites are in the form of CO2, and we have this, uh, we have this equilibrium equation, <clears throat> CO2 plus water, uh, to the carbonic acid. Uh, as you know, as, uh, as CO2 is produced, uh, it can be exhaled through the lungs. Our respiratory rate increases as we produce more CO2 to, to rid ourselves of the CO2 and to move this equation as CO2 goes down or up, the equation pushes, excuse me, pushes to the right in this case. So excess CO2 is exhaled by the, the lungs. This is a very, a very rapid ability to compensate. Of course, next week when we talk about how this applies to us behind the pump, we can adjust the respiratory component. We can blow CO2 off by turning the sweep rate up of the gas flow through our artificial lung or the oxygenator. So this is a very rapid way that we can adjust pH uh, by manipulating the CO2. So that's the respiratory component. The metabolic component is in the kidney um, and base bicarbonate, NaHCO3. Uh, the kidneys can, uh, can exchange, whoops, can exchange sodium and, and hydrogen ions between the tubular cells and the glomerular filtrate. Um, and so we can actually uh, control this metabolic component. Now this is much slower. Uh, this compensation occurs over days or months, unlike the respiratory component, which occurs in, in minutes. Um, so, but this is a very important long-term compensatory mechanism. And so I want to expand upon that equation. Uh, this is very important in light of uh, the acid-base relationship and these buffers, the, the, the sodium bicarbonate and the carbonic acid. So we have uh, H2O, water, plus CO2. And this uh, forms and equ equilibrates uh, with uh, the carbonic acid. Again, you have two hydrogens, two hydrogens, one carbon, one carbon and three oxygens here. Um, this also can be driven uh, to the, into the bicarb, and you can see all of the, uh, all of the elements are, are retained. 
And in this case, as CO2 goes up, it pushes the equation to the right, and the net result is more hydrogen ions being produced. Of course, hydrogen ions, the negative log of hydrogen ion concentration, is pH. And so as these hydrogen ions increase, the pH begins to decrease. Um, so to move that, move that equation back to the left, we have to remove CO2 to restore the acid-base balance. And, and you can see how the respiratory component uh, could help control that. So again, here's our normal blood gas values. It's pretty easy to remember, uh, you know, the pH 7.35 to 7.45, and a little trick: uh, the pCO2 35 to 45 are the last, uh, uh, the the beyond the decimal point for pH. Uh, PO2 normally in the arterial blood is 80 to 90. Again, that's for us at room temp at room air, 21 percent oxygen. On bypass, we are going to move this parameter to a, a slightly higher level, 150 to 250. Um, the metabolic component here, the bicarb, 22 to 26. Base excess, again, uh, if you put 24 in the middle, minus 2 or plus 2, uh, gives us a range, normal ranges for base excess. And, and of course, oxygenation should be greater than 95%. So what if they're not in range? Well, you can look at arterial blood gases, and we categorize them in two primary categories. Well, three if you, if you call normal a category. Um, but beyond normal, you can have two, two types of, of blood gases. It could be acidosis or alkalosis. Acidosis is defined as a pH below 7.35. Alkalosis would be a pH above 7.45 outside of the range of normal. Some things can cause acidosis, like a high CO2. Again, from that equation, a high CO2 pushes our equation to the right, producing more hydrogen ions, which brings the pH down. Um, so that's the respiratory component. There can also be a metabolic component that can create acidosis, and that's when our bicarb is less than that normal range of 22 to to 26. On the alkalosis side, again, the respiratory component, if we, um, if our CO2 is below 35, it will drive the pH higher, pushing the equation to the left. Um, as the, or if, if the bicarb, if the bicarb, if carb, bicarb is high, it will also create an alkalosis. But I want you to look at the blood gas in terms of either it's normal, there's an acidosis, or an alkalosis. And we will show you how to tease out whether it's a respiratory component, or a metabolic component, or a combination. So let's talk about that respiratory acidosis. You can almost look at CO2 as an acid because, again, CO2 pushes this equation in such a way that it produces hydrogen ions. So what can cause that uh, in a, in a non-bypass situation? Well, it's the failure of the lungs to exhale adequate CO2. Uh, if we were on bypass, it would be inadequate sweep rate or that the oxygenator was uh, no longer transferring CO2 appropriately. So in this, in this uh, equation, when, when CO2 becomes greater than 45, the pH is probably going to be below our normal range. Again, CO2 will move this equation through carbonic acid into bicarb and hydrogen ions. Physiologically uh, and clinically, um, emphysema, drug overdoses can uh, really reduce and suppress respiration um, and that can uh, that will cause the CO2 to build up. Uh, narcosis, respiratory arrest, airway obstruction, all of these things can be causes of respiratory acidosis. Again we'll exhaust this on uh, next week when we talk about apl applications of blood gases to bypass but think about it right now while on bypass 
going through an artificial lung, what could cause that? And it would be inadequate sweep rate or a failing uh, CO2 transfer across the membrane. But most likely, it would just require us to ventilate our oxygenator more by turning up the sweep rate. But the respiratory component, uh, a respiratory acidosis uh, is one thing. Uh, metabolic acidosis is, is quite another thing, and that's when our bicarbonate is below 22. Uh, that will also drive our pH into the acidotic range. Things that cause this clinically are renal failure, uh, the diabetic ketoacidosis, lactic acidosis, uh, diarrhea, cardiac arrest, all these things can cause a metabolic acidosis. So uh, metabolic acidosis is, uh, is challenging. On bypass, uh, a metabolic acidosis can develop primarily uh, if we have inadequate delivery of oxygen uh, and we have uh, metabolic acids being produced, organic acids uh, like lactic acid and um, and some of these other organic acids that are produced as a, as a, as a function of anaerobic metabolism. Now, respiratory alkalosis on the other side is too much CO2 is exhaled, hyperventilation. Uh, so if you, if you sit in your seats now and start breathing in and out very rapidly, you might become lightheaded as you blow off CO2 uh, in such a way that it shifts us to an alkalotic uh, range in our blood. So if you blow off uh, high, um, higher amounts of CO2 that gets us below that normal range of, of 35 to 45, um, our pH will, will go up as it shifts the equation to the left. So respiratory alkalosis can be caused, again, by hyperventilation, and that can be caused by panic or pain. Um, pregnancy, just the uh, reduction of, you know, just uh, can cause an acute anemia or, or, uh, or aspirin overdose. Uh, on bypass, respiratory alkalosis, probably almost always it means that your sweep rate is turned, uh, turned up too high, and you're blowing off too much CO2, and you're driving driving the pH into the alkalotic range. Metabolic acidosis is caused by too much bicarb in the plasma. Clinically, that can be caused by an increased loss, loss of acid from the stomach or the kidneys, hypokalemia, or excess alkali intake. Um, <laughs> you know, if, if somebody's popping Tums, <clears throat> Uh, Tums are basically a, a bicarb pill, and that can, uh, I guess if you take enough of those, uh, you can cause a metabolic acidosis, alkalosis. Uh, on bypass, it's pretty rare to see that, but uh, when you do see it, it's usually when, uh, when we're treating with bicarb to correct a metabolic acidosis. You can, uh, you can, if you add too much bicarbonate to the blood, you can create a metabolic alkalosis. I'm going to give you a, a four-step technique on how to analyze an arterial blood gas. Um, if, you, if you go to the supplemental video, there's a six-step method of, an, of blood gas analysis. Um, you know, so there's, there's several ways you can analyze blood gases. There's the tic-tac-toe. Uh, you know, go ahead and find the way that works best for you. Uh, but I found this one to be a, a, a good way to quickly analyze an arterial blood gas. Um, and the four steps require us to look at the oxygen component, the pH component, CO2, and bicarb component. So let's drill down on these, um, and we'll look at a blood gas, and we'll begin to analyze it. So first, again, step one, we're going to examine the PaO2 and the SaO2. So this is the oxygen component. This is, uh, a, remember, the oxy hemoglobin disassociation curve relates SAO2 and PaO2. And we, norm, we know what those normal uh, blood gas levels are. So let's determine the oxygen status first. Uh, again, if we have a low PaO2, that's hypoxia. And if you have a low PaO2, you undoubtedly have a low SAO2. Uh, normal levels of oxygen means adequate. 
um, oxygenation or at least adequate oxygen content to the blood. So that's step one. Let's look at the uh, the oxygen the oxygen status of the blood. From there, let's look at the pH. If we look at the pH, it's either going to be normal or below normal, which would be an acidosis above normal alkalosis. So once we've determined where we're at with acidosis or alkalosis, let's find out why. Remember, there's reasons why it could be an ac acidosis or an alkalosis, and it's connected to the respiratory and the metabolic components. So next step is evaluate the respiratory and metabolic components. Let's study the PaCO2 and the bicarb. Remember they're related with that equation. Uh, respiratory irregularity, if the, P, if the PCO2 is abnormal and the bicarb is normal, so if our PaCO2 is outside that range of 35 to 45, but the metabolic component the bicarb is normal, then we have a respiratory irregularity. If, the meta, if it's a metabolic irregularity, if the bicarbonate is abnormal and the PaCO2 is within the normal limits. And then step four is determine if there's a compensatory mechanism working to try to correct the pH. Again, if we have a primary respiratory acidosis, we may have an increase in PaCO2 and a decrease in pH compensation would occur when the kidneys begin to retain bicarb um, over time to try to correct for that. So there can be compensatory mechanisms and sometimes that can be confusing. Again if you look at the CO2 we know our normal CO2 is in that range 35 to 45 and that gives us a nice uh, pH of 7.4 and it's a, it's a for fairly linear relationship as it goes up to 60, pH 7.3, 80, 7.2, 30, 7.5, 20, 7.6. So you can see the CO2 relates to the, uh, to the pH. So let's, let's tackle this. Let's describe this. I'm not showing uh, an oxygen saturation. I apologize, but we can, step one, we're going to evaluate the oxygenation. This looks normal. Now, step two, let's look at the pH. Is this, is this uh, normal? No, it's not. It is below 7.35, so this is an acidosis. So what kind of acidosis is this? Well, let's look at the respiratory component. Respiratory is irregular. It's abnormally high. Bicarb is within the normal limits. So this is a straightforward garden variety Respiratory acidosis. That is how you would describe this blood gas. Respiratory acidosis. Let's look at this blood gas. Oxygenation, good. pH 7.5. That is alkalosis. Why are we alkalotic? Well, let's look at the CO2. Mm. CO2 is low. Bicarb is ooh, just barely within that normal limits. Uh, so again, we would describe this blood gas as a respiratory alkalosis. The respiratory component explains this alkalosis. How about this one? Okay, 7.30. Well, that's acidosis. Again, our oxygenation looks within normal limits. PCO2 is normal. Hmm. Oh, look at our bicarb. It's very low and our base excess is very high. Um, so we have a metabolic acidosis. The bicarb is low. The metabolic component explains this acidosis. CO2 is normal. So you should be able to run through all of these blood gases, describe what they are. Um, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and